your piece, not the last time, but tonight or this afternoon. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what's going on with you, what issues you're concerned with, because this is about what the Long Beach community is concerned with. Long Beach! How did you find out about this? Oh, the internet. The internet? The internet. Yeah, uh, it's We're not in the media very, very often. Especially Long Beach, right? Especially Long Beach, especially. I mean, it's slowly but surely being forced into the media because 99% of the people. <laughs> right, right. Now, can I ask you a question? What do you want? What kind of solutions do you want? Well, I mean, there's so many issues when you're talking about 99% of the people in this country. There's a lot of issues. My personal issues are corporations running our government. Um, I want to run our government. I want the people to run our government the way it's supposed to be. So I contact Congress all the time, and I'm not hurt because I don't have a million dollars a day to throw at them like a corporation does. So that's that's my issue. It's good to see you all here. Congratulations for being here. Thank you for taking the first step. But this is not the end. We're starting what's going to be a very, very long struggle. We're starting what's going to take maybe even years to change. But every step we take brings us closer to regain, reclaiming what has been taken from us, which is our humanity. So exciting to see uh, young and old, gay and straight, every denomination, every ethnicity. That's what we need to do is come together and fight as that 99%. Sorry. As, as the 99%. We need to we need to stick together real quick. My story, um, over 50ish or so. Uh, you know, good to see 50 year olds, 50 plus here. Um, been right on. Been unemployed for about four years. My partner uh, in real estate obviously took a dive. We lost the car. We lost the house. Our jobs. I mean, we are. The 99 percent. There are so many people just like us out there, and you know what? We are scraping by. We are trying to figure out how to make it in this economy. And while that one percent up there are just living the life, yeah. it's not fair. We need to stick together. We need to have something to say. We need to have some demands. We 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 can change this together, though. We have to stick together. Thank you so much. Onyx, like you heard earlier, I'm in high school right now. Let me tell you, this cause goes to so many things. At, at, at my high school personally, we don't have health. We don't have computers. At one of my best friend's high school, they don't even have science classes. Lakewood High. The Long Beach District High Schools, there's... We can't go to the library because they let off our librarian. They let off so many teachers. The counselors for the special ed programs have been let off. So all those programs for kids with PTSD, mental disorders, kids that are autistic, they now have to go in with the general population, and it is incredibly difficult for them to keep up. I'm part of those programs as well. From my personal account at my school, the students aren't heard. They won't be heard. Some kids, of course, some kids don't want their education. Some kids want to ditch class. But that's not everybody. There is a large percent of almost all the kids in my school that want these classes. I took chemistry last year. We didn't even have chemicals to do half of our assignments that are required to pass chemistry. How is that even possible? Also, money, we need the money, like you said, for the campaigns and everything. Because administration needs to be educated on a lot of things. For example, in my school we have discrimination right now. So I want to bring to everybody's attention, there is discrimination at my school right now that I'm trying to protest, but I don't have the money, of course. And political people that back up these things, they don't have the money to fight it either. Who's getting discriminated against? Save the I, schools! I am non-gender conforming and lesbian most of the time, but, um, <laughs> most of the time. And I would like to run... But it's high school, and I deal with it. The thing is, here's homecoming, and I want to run for homecoming prince. Yeah. And they said I couldn't because I was a girl. But then I said, all right, well, you know what? Let me bend a little bit. I'm not going to make a big deal. What if I run for homecoming princess, right? Yeah. I wanted to wear a tux. And they said I cannot wear a tux because I'm a girl, and it is not formal attire for a girl. But the last time I wore Oh, shit. <laughs> that last time I looked, I thought it was formal attire, dresses, tux, all that. As long as I look 
I have Mexican family in my, I have Mexicans in my family, I have Asians in my family, I have so many relatives. I live with, I live with my family in Britain for a while, and I came back here. I'm extremely shy of standing in front of people, so this is a good for me. Good, good. I'm standing here today because I, I look on the news every day I get home from school. I'm in 10th grade, I go to Millican High School in Long Beach, and I look at the news and I see all these politics. I see all these people bickering against each other, but I don't see any one of you. I don't see anyone standing up until today of the wrongs they see and the wrongs they want to change. And I want to be a part of that because all the young people here, we're the future of this country and we're the future of this world. And it's about time that we stood up for ourselves because if we don't, things are just going to get worse. And base, if we, yeah, exactly, we don't stand up, things are going to get worse. And I'm very proud to be among all these wonderful people. Ever since I came here this morning, I've met nothing but wonderful people here. The 99% of Americans who have done nothing wrong, who have worked hard all their lives just to make it. And they deserve a chance, just like anyone up in one of these huge high-rises does. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. I was born in the United States of America. I was told from my birthday, from the first time I, l I understood English, that in America everyone was meant to have a chance. And it's time for us to stand up for our chance. The site is OccupyLBC.org. There's no www in front of that. Uh, also on Facebook, that's how you can keep updated. We do have a WePay account, and we're working on putting together a bank account right now. Um, and Jordan over here on the table or something is a, a bucket.
There's a donation bucket over there if you wanna if you wanna contribute right now. Uh, we understand that not everybody's in the financial situation to be able to donate. Completely understand, but if you can, it's much appreciated. Uh, a few things that we will need for the actual occupation: rice, bread, bagels, peanut butter, fruit, pasta. Uh, prefer preferably non-perishables. Water and drums. Uh, let's try to stay conscientious of our planet and not bring too many water bottles. Bring your clean canteens. Blankets, sleeping bags, jackets, flashlights and batteries, tents, art material for poster making, um, medical supplies, and your time. Uh, it's very important that people that don't have any obligations to work or school or family right now, give us your time in the organizational process. That is the key to this movement right now, is organizing. Okay, in our General Assembly meetings, if somebody is speaking, and you agree with what they're saying, and you want to support what they're saying, we have a silent clap so that the noise of our clapping does not overpower their voice. This is our silent clap. Also, that same signal is used as a yes vote during our committee if a proposal is made, or during the General Assembly, rather, when a proposal is made, if you want to vote yes, you show your support by voting yes. If you feel like the speaker is taking too long to make their point, you can request that they move it along by doing this. If you disagree what, with what is being said, but you feel that it is not important enough to um, undermine our movement, you just personally disagree, but you would like to move on,
We should have that here in LA, in America. People should not have to drop out of school because they cannot afford it. Okay? Let's do something. Let's, let's organize. Let's get together. I want to see young and old all together. And I want to see you guys out here. Please bring friends. We need more people. Social media is great. Apathy is our worst enemy. Please, band together and let's do something. We've got to put an end to this. Thank you. My problem primarily isn't with uh, the city of Long Beach as much as uh, the federal and state management of the economy and of the money. So, um, my mom, uh, typically she has like 19 to 20 first grade students in a class and then uh, She's had to start taking furlough days, which are days which the teachers' union decided that they would not work and they wouldn't get paid, and uh, that's how you know they would compensate for not having enough money in the education system, and that's how they would you know be able to have a full year of school. So this year they're not taking any furlough days, and instead the teachers' union agreed, which my mom is a part of. She. Uh, in order to work in uh, the California state, uh, at least uh, public education system, you have to be part of the teachers union. Oh, yeah. And um, so they agreed this year to cut the amount of teachers that they have and each teacher has to have more students. So now at her elementary school, there are four first grade teachers and about 30 students per class. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, I've been there and seen it firsthand, but you just can't imagine that these are first graders. They don't know the meaning of rules usually, and it's it's honestly complete chaos. With 30 people, she has four students that she has to isolate completely from the group when they have uh, group time because they simply can't uh, interact peaceably with other students. And uh, basically, education is just not happening in at this lower level, which is a crucial, crucial stage for students because this is when they learn to socialize with other students for the first time and when they really get fundamental skills taught to them. And my mom doesn't have any uh, teacher's aides of any kind. It's not an American problem. It's not a Californian problem. It's not a problem about Long Beach. Yes. It's a global yes. problem. Yeah. China, people are exploited everywhere, and it's only when the day when everybody rises up and stands up and unionizes across the globe is progress finally going to be achieved. To fight imperialism? Yeah. 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 To show these corporations that we're not afraid? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To show the police that we're fighting for them? Yeah. For the working class struggle? Yeah. I'm a former Marine and I resisted the wars because I found out the truth. I did not want my hands soaked in blood for gasoline, for profits, for bullets, people over profits. There's a saying, people with power are afraid to lose it. People with overwhelming power refuse to lose it. They're not going to give up this power so easily. We might be protesters here today, but the battle's coming. And it's coming soon. New York was last week. Look how they treated them. We here in Long Beach have more police shootings than in New York. New York is a big place, my friends. How is it that we have such violent police officers? They're supposed to be civil servants, but they're the hand that keeps us down. Once we unionize, once we get together, and like my friend over here was saying, once we unionize on a global scale, then we can make a difference. So you have to let everyone know, fight with all your heart. Don't be, let this be something you do on the side. Let this overwhelm your heart. And let's overwhelm the world. That's all I have to say.